Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Oscar. Rick, you yeah. went to build. Yeah. Lucky you. I was lucky and it was awesome to be in Seattle again. Of course, we were there two years ago. Sorry I wasn't there. Yeah, I missed you, buddy. <sighs> I missed build. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, uh, but what is your top three that you took away from there? Only three? I get four. Is that enough? Probably not. In, uh, in no particular order, uh, one would be the Windows Terminal. Finally, we're getting a new terminal, new, yeah. new command line, tabbed interface. It's finally going to be a decent tool, or at least that's what it looks like in the video, right? Well, yeah, I saw a trailer of it. looked great. I hope the actual thing is just as great as the trailer. But uh, There was a lot of shininess. In yeah, but still, I wanted it. What else? Um, well, another really cool addition is um, Internet Explorer running inside of Edge. Yeah. So we have Microsoft Edge, which is now built on Chromium, as we know. Um, well, that's not officially released yet, right? No, we have the Canary builds and the developer builds. So you can be an insider if you go to MicrosoftEdgeInsider.com. Um, so I run the, the dev build now, as do you. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing is they're working on having an Internet Explorer version inside of Edge, so you don't need IE anymore. Uh, your IT department sets up which URLs need to be run inside of Internet Explorer. Just for those legacy applications running on yeah. the internet. You You're know, you have, you have those old line of business applications that were built specifically for Internet Explorer and rebuilding them is too much, takes too much time. Yeah, and then those same <coughs> people using that use, this is their browser, so they will stay yeah. in IE, and yeah. that's still a problem. I'm on a project where we see we have a lot of enterprise users and like 35% of my users is still IE every month. It's really a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry. So what it does is you map an application to be run in IE. It doesn't start a different browser as it does right now. So you don't actually start IE on your machine. It stays inside of Edge. It just runs on the IE engine. But only when you need it and only when somebody from IT has said, this URL needs to be uh, in IE. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, and then one of the things I thought was really cool was Fluid Framework. What's that? Uh, Fluid Framework is a framework where um, it's, it knows that you're actually trying to work on a specific component, mm -hmm. and you can um, share those across different types of apps. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example? Uh, well, for instance, uh, let's say you're working in a Word document, yeah. and you have a, a graph there with yeah. some data under. Mm -hmm. And then you copy the graph, you paste yeah. it in Teams, and then you discuss with your team what happens yeah, yeah. with the data. So it actually shows you the graph like you're yeah. seeing it. But then the cool thing is if you change the underlying data in Word, your team's paste of that same graph will uh, reflect the changes. And if somebody else changes that stuff in your Teams, in it teams will channel. update in, in Word. That's so crazy. collaborating will be much, much more efficient. More magical. But more magical. <laughs> really magic, cool. Magic and unicorns, right? Okay, those were three. Yeah, I have an extra one. What? Um, Minecraft, they, they teased an update on Minecraft where Minecraft gets, uh, let's say, augmented reality functionality. So Minecraft running on a phone, you're out there in the real world and then you sit on a bench and then you point your camera somewhere and then you see a Minecraft thing, thing <laughs> in real life. Okay, so that's... It sounds like Pokemon Go. It's Pokemon Go meets Minecraft so meets I'm not sure they what are. they're going to Oh, I'm curious. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's really cool. And what did you uh, well, take I was away from Billy? here in Holland, really cold, um, watching the keynotes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I was focused, of course, on all the serverless stuff mostly. Sure. Um, Azure Functions team uh, caught my eye, uh, working with functions quite a lot uh, during the week. So. Um, yeah, I, I, what I what I saw is premium plan. Yeah, that's that's. I awesome. was missing that for a while. I yeah. love serverless. I love the scaling of it, uh, but in some cases you just need a bit more. You need more memory. You need, you need like the execution time. It's five minutes, right? By default. Five minutes by default. And then you can ten minutes. You can stretch up to ten. Yeah, premium plan. There's no limit. Finally. No limit. So it's it's working similar as the consumption plan. Um, so you don't have to worry about some instance or whatever, um, but it always has 
a warm instance for you. Yeah. So there's always one instance warmed up. So that's also running. Yeah, cold start is gone. So that also means that you pay for the warmed up instance, right? No, you still pay for execution. But okay. How d how does that work scaling? Well, it's a public preview right now. Um, we'll, we'll see the the actual thing when we start using it. But um, I was checking out uh, some. Um, video they had out and the scale behavior should look a bit like this near left one is the old yeah so Where you get you, some load and then it says you get oh you're, load you get load i need to scale some magical decision has been made and here's another instance or or another 70 instances and i love that it's yeah. already great but what they try to do now is you have some load coming in and oh you have a warm instance it's being hit here's another warm instance so they're they want to uh, slide that graph a bit to the left yeah, so they're pre-warming instances, and as pre soon as that one gets load, the second one's already warmed up for you, right? Yeah, so it, it really tries to predict the load you're getting at, so they tune that. So I'm really curious to see this in action, yeah. um, but like half of those specs of premium plans already get me excited. <laughs> so that was, was pretty good. Other thing, what I was waiting for for a while to officially be released, because I fiddled with it, made bindings, but proper dependency injection. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's now a package. It's a 1.0 package. Uh, you set up a startup class, you uh, override uh, or you extend some class, you override something, and you get the service collection you're used to in ASP.NET Core. So it's using those same components. Um, small trick, but we'll uh, also uh, see that uh, in other videos. We're going to zoom into some technology yep. um, about how it exactly works. But you have dependency injection now. Cool. Really good. Can't wait to get my hands on that one. And I actually totally missed out on something um, before because they mentioned the Azure Serverless Community Library. And I missed it. I just missed it. But they said, oh, we tweaked a bit and made it prettier and more functional. I was like, what is that? So I took a look and there's actually uh, a library online. So it's a website uh, having all kinds of uh, examples for you that you can check out. So it's all serverless, it's all um, um, pointed at uh, Azure serverless solutions. Yeah. And say you want something. Let's say we were talking about it. You want something in functions too, um, C sharp, whatever. It gives you a lot of examples. So you can really see this. Yeah, I can see Cosmos DB and I can and see And it's it. open. You can contribute if you want. If nice. you have some code, it's like, I want to share this with someone because it took me two days and I would really like to save someone else two days. Um, for instance, we were talking about injection. Um, these are two examples now for the dependency injection, the new one in um, Azure Functions 2. Even though this is mine, which I created last night, submitted, and it got pulled in. So it looks really good. And uh, this setup points to uh, a really simple example. It actually uh, guides you through a GitHub, has my code, you open it, F5 it, and it runs. Awesome. But if you're now like, ah, how do I do that? How do I set up Cosmos in the function? How do I inject that? Or how? It's there. Like, there are a lot of examples there, and it's growing every day. Cool. Um, so, that was a really big one for me. Um, yeah, and yeah, the final one, I have some slides for it. Let's see. Have you seen this? Yeah, how does that work? It's SQL know. Server serverless. So it's SQL serverless. SQL serverless. It, I'm yeah, not. you're not naming it, I hope. No. It sounds a bit weird. SQL but Server serverless. Serverless um, okay. preview. It's preview. How does it work? Um, the thing is, uh, it actually shuts down if you don't need it. Cool. So, so you only pay per use. There we so are again. Probably storage also. Storage, something uh, storage you pay, use, right? storage use. So it's there, uh, they don't throw it away, so you have to pay something. But the nice thing is it actually pauses all the compute. Um, that also means that we're introducing a cold start. Yeah. So it have, has proper scenarios where it works and some scenarios where it doesn't work at all because you really want that thing on standby. Yeah, but that, that's what we say all the time, right? Every uh, type of functionality has its place. Yeah, yeah. Don't use it just to use it, but use it if it fits. Get the right tool. But the nice thing is also a project could start like this and we don't have any usage and we don't have any, have any budget. Yeah. We don't have cost. Later on, if the business case is correct and we actually have some customers and we need a warm instance and we need to scale out, probably can also pay it. 
cool. So that was really good. Um, so it's, uh, if you look at the documents, it's talking about some scenarios, how you can configure it because you're scaling between a minimum and maximum cores because you want to be able to limit it, that yeah, not your customers like determine what your bill is going to be in the end too much. Um, and you can configure when it goes back into pause. So when the shutdown happens, um, for some people that might be a minute. For some people it's like, don't do that because if I have activity within the hour, I could also have activity. So yeah, quiet okay. down a bit. So, but that's configuring yeah. how the serverless part of SQL Server works. You're just just uh, changing the dials of that. It's cool. really good. Um, yeah, pricing uh, looked a bit complicated to me. Uh, you, you, uh, you're right, you have storage, so you will pay for storage somewhere. Um, but if you're not using it, you're not paying. So I already thought a lot of scenarios where this could actually save some uh, money when we set this up. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, uh, we have an acceptance environment but that we don't hit unless we're fully going uh, a regression test to yeah. production. This is something we need to dive into. I, I really want to. But let's do so in another meeting. No, let's do that. In another session because... For now, this is it, I guess. We're almost already out of time, man. Okay. Well, thank you. And see we'll you next see time. you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.